Good news, everyone. After more than 30 years of searching by the news media, Ronald Reagan's infamous welfare queen has finally been found. She lives in Bentonville, Arkansas. She has 80 names and 30 addresses, Reagan warned during his 1976 run for the president about this nameless Cadillac-driving woman who's conning the social safety net. He said she's got Medicaid, getting food stamps, and she's collecting welfare under each of her names. In total, Reagan said her tax-free cash income is over $150,000 a year. Right. For more than 30 years, Republicans have used the existence of this welfare queen to justify their tax on public spending and prove that the welfare state has run amok. But we never found her. After decades of searching, the best and brightest minds in the field of journalism were never able to discover who was behind the wheel of that welfare queen's Cadillac, or if she even existed. That is until now. We now realize our mistake. We should have been listening to Anthony Scalia and his buddies on the Supreme Court. Instead of looking for actual people when we're looking for the welfare queen, we should have been looking for corporate people. We should have been looking at Walmart. Walmart is the largest private employer and brought in more revenue in 2011 than any other company in the nation. They pocketed a not too shabby $16.4 billion in profits that same year. And the six Walmart heirs, the Walton family, own roughly $100 billion in wealth, which is more than 40% of Americans combined. But despite making all this money, Walmart's business model hinges on mooching from the government. It hinges on Walmart being the biggest welfare queen in the United States. Because of their everyday low wages that the retail giant pays its employees, our government, you and me, have to step in and provide public assistance to Walmart workers just so they can survive, which is why the Walmart workforce represents the largest recipient of federal aid in our nation. A Walmart worker makes on average 31% less than a worker for any other large retailer and requires 39% more in public assistance. Seriously. They looked at this at UC Berkeley found that Walmart's low wages are costing that state, the state of California, just the state of California, $86 million a year to provide public assistance like food stamps and health care to the 44,000 low-wage employees that Walmart has in California. That state spends nearly $2,000 every single year on each Walmart employee because on Walmart wages, they can't afford basic essentials like housing, food, and health care. In total... It's estimated that Walmart stores loot more than $2.6 billion every single year from the federal government, federal and state governments in the form of taxpayer-funded public assistance to their employees. That's more than a billion dollars in health care costs associated with Medicaid, $225 million in free or reduced price lunches for school children of Walmart employees. And now the Huffington Post tells us Walmart is planning to loot even more from us taxpayers as the giant corporation is adopting a new health care policy that's going to deny insurance to any employee working fewer than 30 hours a week. Used to be they did this for people working under 25 hours. Uh, Now they're saying, oh, Obamacare has got this 30-hour threshold. Okay, we'll do that. Walmart routinely forces their workers into part-time schedules working fewer than 30 hours a week. So many are going to lose their health insurance under this policy. And when asked to comment about this by the Huffington Post, Walmart said, eh, We'll pass. No answer. Make no mistake about it. While it may be individual Walmart employees who are collecting the government benefits, it's the corporation that's really walking away with the big bucks. If the government didn't step in to provide food assistance, Walmart couldn't operate with a team of emaciated workers unable to lift pallets of canned goods or count the correct change at the checkout lanes. If the government didn't step in to provide health insurance, then Walmart stores would be a breeding ground for infectious diseases since their employees can't afford to see a doctor on their own. If the government didn't provide school lunch assistance, then parents who work at Walmart may have less money to put gas in their car and may not even make it to work. I mean, how can a business succeed with a sickly, tired, tardy, or altogether absent workforce that can't? 
Now, most companies in America get it. That if you want to have a functional business, having a healthy, happy, productive workforce is like job one. First thing, Walmart has not got that memo. Instead, with their enormous fortune, they're shifting that responsibility to have, you know, to have their employees be well-fed and able to buy a house or even rent, be able to have their kids in school. They, they've shifted that responsibility onto you and me. Walmart, biggest welfare queen in America. The only difference is that Walmart actually exists, and Reagan's welfare queen doesn't, didn't, never did. I mean, you know, conservatives have been using Reagan's welfare queen shtick for years to go after individual Americans, poor Americans, the working poor. And it's time to end the handouts. All right. They even, they even renamed Social Security Insurance. Yeah, that's the original name of it. It was the old age and something insurance program. Insurance is part of the name of Social Security, the original name. And FDR never, ever called it an entitlement. He referred to it as social insurance. Conservatives have renamed it as entitlements, like, hey, well, I think I'm entitled to something. No, sorry, it's insurance. You know, it's, it's time we target the actually, the actual, excuse me, institutions of, of irresponsibility in America, and that's, Walmart, I mean, you know, these, they don't, they don't give a damn about their corporate, their, their, their workers. They just, you know, it's, it's all about the corporate bottom line. And frankly, in my opinion, if a corporation can't afford to pay its employees enough that each worker can afford basic essentials like health care, food, and housing, then we shouldn't let them do business in America. We should say no more corporate welfare queens in America. If you're paying somebody such low wages that they have to go on Medicaid, that their kids had to get food stamps, that they even qualify for them, then your business model shouldn't be something that America is holding up to the world and saying, hey, look, at this is our most successful company. Now, we saw you know, a bunch of Walmart workers walk off the job on Black Friday, some, some beginning efforts to try to unionize. Company is going to try and squash these people like a bug. So the next time you go to Walmart, say something nice to a Walmart worker about unionizing.